Well, good morning, everyone. Good Welcome morning. to. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Lan. Good morning, Lan. Hi, how are you guys? Fine. Nice Thank you, you so much for being on the show. Today is a, is a great tribute to a wonderful dog, Gander, that we all know and love and, and respect. And how are you doing, Lan? Yeah, you know, like we talked about earlier, it's been a, you know, it's a roller coaster of a week, you know. I mean, uh, you know, we were together 24 7 for about eight years, you know. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, and I hate to say that because I don't want to diminish anybody else's grief with their dog, but I think for handlers, it's even harder. You know, we're, you know, we, we spend more time with the dogs than we spend with any other human ever in our life, you know, so they're there and they work with us. They work for us. They, you know, they're in constant service to us. So it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough. That was my best friend, you know. Oh my God. Yeah. We, we know absolutely. He was your best friend and you know, dogs really do change lives is a tribute to, to um, Gander and to you. Gaetan put together a beautiful video. Thank you, Gaetan. You're welcome. Here yeah. You and we're going to share that right now so that, Hey, everybody, by the way, I brought the tissues. So Great. here you go. Here's the tissues if you want to, because this is a beautiful video. Okay, let's yeah, go. That's, that's right. plenty of that. Oh, Thanks. yeah, yeah, it was really, really very, very beautiful. Thank, thank you, Gaetan. What a great, You're welcome. great one. So with that, Lon, tell us, how did you and Gander get together? Well, lot, lots of, uh, <laughs> our whole life is a series of 
accidents, you know, or great coincidences or synchronicity, whatever you want to call it. We, uh, I was really, really sick. You know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't walk more than, you know, 30, 40 feet at a time. I had, you know, scarring on my lungs. I had, uh, uh, I had autoimmune issues going on, you know, auto, my, my anti antibodies, you know, the autoimmune stuff was through the roof. Uh, my heart rate, my resting heart rate was 120 beats a minute. Uh, I couldn't pick things up. I had paralysis in my left arm, all kinds of horrible things going on with me. And I, you know, I looked at a show on, on, uh, television. It was a CBS thing. Or I think it was, or Kitty, I think. I can't remember. Katie Couric was on it, and, and it was about an agency in Denver. And and I thought, gosh, wouldn't that be wonderful, you know, if I had a dog like these guys have? And and uh, at that time, they were only taking dogs for people with physical pro- problems, you know. And I, I said, well, it's a long shot. I'll do it. And I was living in China at the time, and uh, so so I called them, and then I sent in an application, and uh, and went through the, came back to the States, went to the interview with them. Uh, you know, they parade dogs in front of you to see what kind of dog you're going to like. And I wanted a lab, you know, I thought, well, a lab would be a really cool dog. And, uh, and, uh, they called me about seven months later and said, you know, we have a, you know, uh, we have a dog for you. You know, the bad news is he's not what you wanted, but, uh, you know, I took one look at Gander and, and uh, of course, there wasn't any anything to decide after that. Yeah, so, I saw that. I saw that you said uh, a poodle. I can't go. Yeah. To, I can't go to the to. Uh, yeah, and I don't want people that you know. And there's a lot of guys with you know service dog poodles. I mean, that's a, you know they're one of the brightest dogs in the world, and they're they're amazing dogs. I just you know, it, we had poodles when I was a kid, and I I really you know I thought nah, I'd rather go to the VA with you know like a you know with with a different kind of dog. And of course, Gander's you know, everybody that ever saw Gander, you know, fell in love with him, you know. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some of Gander's accomplishments. I know you're very proud of many of them. And I got some pictures here, too, Lon, that maybe we can talk to them. Uh, let's see here, this one. No, wow. Uh, yeah, that was the uh, American Humane Association Hero Dog Awards. That's a it, it's an interesting contest. It goes on for a long time, you know, and there's a lot of voting involved and there've been a lot of great dogs that have, you know, that have won that award. But, uh, and then it's, I think toward the end, it's like a half celebrity vote and it's a half, you know, community vote. The community supported us really well. And uh, we ended up going to Hollywood, uh, met all kinds of wonderful people. Brandon McMillan from Lucky Dog was one of those people that we had the good fortune to meet. And I'll tell you about some of the things he's talking about later and it was you know it was yeah it was you know i mean picked up in a limousine you know walked on the red carpet uh you know met one of my personal heroes polly perrette who, you know who played abby and ncis and greg Luganis, and it was just you know it was an all-star thing and, and it kind of just really one of those one in a lifetime kind of things you know yeah, and he was with you through uh, some of the, through no matter what was going on with you, huh? Yeah, and I, I hurt myself at that thing. I, they'd had like a dry run uh, earlier in the day, and I had, it was really dark where the stairs were, and, and I had on, uh, uh, I had on a tuxedo, and I, I had, I had on shoes that I hadn't worn in a long time, and it, it I just took a tumble down the stairs, and cranked my ankle so I ended up going out on stage you know with a with a cane you know? so, <laughs> and people thought you know, I, and imagine people thought oh you know that, that immediately they thought that was probably my disability as a veteran you know and, and but uh, you know Gander was a rock star at the whole thing and he was uh, he was so good and, and and there were so many great deserving dogs there that you know in different categories mm-hmm. so, yeah that was a that was a special event and and then uh Diane Mellon and Stacy Stone were there who were doing a documentary about us at the time. And, and, uh, so they captured the whole thing on film and put that in a documentary that was about Gander. And so it was, you know, it was, it, it was like one thing after another for us. You know, it was really, it, it, it was very special. Yeah. Well, I see that, that so many, I mean, there's so many things that Gander has done, but the pictures, if I show them to you, will this re- create a memory for you? <laughs> I, I, 
I've tried to, we, uh, Mark and I and uh, Gander, you know, we got yeah, Mark travels with us for six years all over the country doing acts of kindness, you know, for veterans and, you know, homeless people. And uh, so there was a sign, we, you know, we re reproduced some stuff from the Blues Brothers, you know, on a couple of our trips, you know, like to let people know we were getting close to Chicago again and things like that. So it was a, yeah, we always goofed around. I never dressed Gander in costumes, you know, I mean, I've always thought Gander, Gander had more class than that, you know, so I, I not that I, put people mm -hmm. down to dress their dogs up but I, it, I just it just wasn't something that ever seemed to fit gander you know like maybe a pair of glasses once in a while and he rocked hats i've never seen you know i mean i look like a goofball in hats and gander actually <laughs> looked like he was he was born to wear hats and so people so people gave us hats from all over the country i think we we've, we've got like 170 or 180 memento hats from around the country <laughs> What's yeah. the, what are the skills, some of the skill of Gender? He has a very oh talented God, dog. so many things he could do. You know, he could, uh, he can open doors, he could pick things up, he could turn on lights, he could, uh, he could block for me. If someone came at me quickly, Gander would get up and get between us, you know, not get aggressive. You know, he could, uh, uh, he, he, if I got upset, he put his, feet in my chest and would uh, lick my face and force me to calm down. Uh, just I, there were task after task after task and a lot of them were things and some things that he just intuitively did. He'd never been taught, you know, mm -hmm. so and he knew when I wasn't feeling well and was always there. And, and he wasn't just me. He helped out. He helped out, you know, dozens and dozens of other people like that, you know, and he would recognize the illness in people sometimes before they knew. Mm -hmm. yeah. We see him visiting hospital and uh, children's. And... Yeah, he had a special thing for, you know, special thing, especially for, uh, for disabled kids. Uh, he always gravitated toward them. I'm, I'm sorry, I lost you for a second. He gravitated toward them. And uh, we adopted a school in St. Louis, uh, the Miriam School in St. Louis, primarily autistic kids. And uh, we would Skype them and we'd go visit them. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite stories, uh, we, we went there to visit one time announced and they had signs all over the doors, but they had them down below uh, so that Gander could read them. And then uh, we went in one time and uh, I think it was one of the Cardinals was in the back of the room and they were going to introduce him, one of the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, the teacher up front, they couldn't see us. The kids were all facing forward. And one of the teachers said, uh, hey, uh, kids, we have somebody really famous here to see you guys today. Who do you think it is? And in unison, the kids all went, Gander. And the better part of that was, you know, for the sake of humility for me, you know, then uh, uh, one of the other kids in the front raised their hand and said, and, and Mr. Gander. <laughs> and so ah. pretty, pretty much from that day on, yeah. I got known as Mr. Gander. And when we went to conferences, people would make my name tags out as Mr. Gander. You know, so. <laughs> well, you know, Len, you have been connected spiritually to, to Gander for, for so long. Every picture that I see of you, yeah. you're looking at him and the love and the affection that you shared for him was just so overwhelming. Uh, you, you seem to to connect at the heart level and i bet you could you, te telepathy he would know what you needed didn't he we always knew what each other needed it was yeah. we didn't have to you know nothing ever needed to be spoken i you know he he knew immediately when i needed things i knew immediately when he needed things you know we i, I yeah you spend eight years 24 7 you know you kind of get it and then also just you know yeah he we we had we had signals for each other you know that that weren't taught they just came in time yeah yeah and, and i think that's what a lot of people strive for certainly with the dog connection we we admired you that's why we wanted you on the show so much because we could see that there was something above and beyond what normal relationships are mm -hmm. so uh you know there was a point Lon, when um when you did a, a show, I guess it was about two years ago, and it was called uh, Gander, America's Hero Dog. Do you remember yeah, that? Documentary. 
Mm -hmm. The okay. documentary was that Stacy and Diane did. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's just one part of it that I wanted to share with everybody. This was after Gander had been diagnosed. He was sick. You were devastated. You thought for sure he might be gone then. And you talked about how you felt about him. And I'd like to share what you had said. I think that probably the worst I've ever felt. I, mean, I, I, I feared at that moment. I, I think we do, when you love something so much, you know, you fear every day you're going to lose it anyway. You know, every day is a, every day for at least a moment, if you really love something, is a, is a partial funeral. You know, you know that, you know that one day this is not going to be here with you. And uh, that's powerful stuff. And, and so, but this was real. Suddenly I thought maybe I could, I could lose this best friend, this teacher, this, you know, this bodhisattva who has carried me through so many hard times. So thank God we, you know, thank God we got a handle on this you know, before we lost him. What a, what a monumental loss to, to me and to lots of other people, you know. Just wanted to share that part. When you when you talk from your heart like that, it it really, it really gravitates for us, mm -hmm. and I know that does for everyone else. And by the way, we've got over a hundred people watching the show right now, and there's been over seventy comments. So we want to thank you all. We're not uh, unless you want us to go through some of them, Lon. To, do you want to or not? Oh wait! Oh wait! I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Whatever okay. you guys want. Okay. Oh, since my since my mic is muted there. Yeah. No, okay. Oh, there, okay. there, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry so, all right. So, with that, we want to say. Um, so, how has your life changed since Scander became your service dog? Because I know at one point you didn't have a service dog, and you were helping other guys out. And then when you got one, you decided to help other vets get service dogs. So how how was how did your life change? Well, that you know, by the time I got Gander, I was having you know, like I told you, I couldn't even. I'd have people at the service dog agency, Freedom Service Dogs. I had to have someone actually fill out the forms for me because my autoimmune issues were so bad, and uh, I couldn't couldn't even use my hand to write. And at the same time, I I wasn't, you know, I used to do conferences and speaking around the country, and I was a professor, and you know, I would talk to hundreds of people at a time, and I couldn't even get, you know, in front of a couple of people without without having uh, extreme anxiety and problems and didn't want to be out in public and just, you know, I didn't want anything to do with anybody. And, uh, you know, and Gander, and again, my heartbeat was at 120 beats a minute and, you know, all kinds of things. And within within a week of getting Gander, you know, at least the heart rate changed and went back to normal. And then um, slowly over time, you know, with little presentations we would do because people were interested in, you know, what we were doing and why we were doing it. and and, uh, you know, we at least got back to some semblance of normal, you know. So, I mean, Gander brought me back into the world. I mean, I don't, how do you, there's no way to, there's no way to thank anybody or anything for, for doing that in your life. You know, I mean, it's, I wouldn't be talking to you if this was six and a half years ago, you and I wouldn't be talking, you know, this mm -hmm. wouldn't even be a possibility. So by being around being in contact with you a little bit not a lot but a little bit i realize you're a very very modest man you do a tremendous amount of volunteer work helping the veteran the homeless all over the country and this is really really exceptional uh working with gender is maybe you hiding behind gender and gender is the star but you're doing all the work well you know People ask that a lot, you know, and it was funny. Somebody said something the other day, and I, and I commented on it. You know, they said, uh, wow, you know, it's kind of cool. You made Gander famous, you know, with your writing. And it was like, and, and I didn't get upset about that, but I went, no, you know, I, I you know, the, the VA and the medical authorities had me on medicines to stop the nightmares and to the terrors and the things that were happening, the panic attacks were happening during the day. And I was in a creative lobotomy for several years. And when Gander came along, uh, I was, you know, he, I was able to get off the medication. I was able to start writing again mm -hmm. and, and I was able to write about him and I never said anything that wasn't true. You can't, 
I think anybody that ever met Gander in person and, mm-hmm. and spent any time with him uh, immediately knew that he was different and extraordinary. I agree. And, and that wasn't something I could make, make up. Yeah, no, right. No, I, I all agree with that. So what what does, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. What, what does the, the future hold for you now, Lon? You know, we're looking at a lot of things. Um, of course, we've had, you know, we've had offers from all over the, you know, from a lot of places, you know, to, uh, you know, people wanted to donate dogs. And, and we had an extraordinary offer from, you know, from a, a celebrity in Hollywood that, that, you know, has a, that says he would be happy to train a dog for me. But he said the right thing. You know, he said, I know you're not ready for this right now. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have said, because I think they're used to pets and they're used to pets dying. And they say, you know, oh, yeah, you know, when as soon as you get another dog and it's like, first, not just because he was mine, but there'll never be another gander, period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and second, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a lot of work. I, I don't think I'm totally healed yet. You know, I, I'm, you know, on that, I'm on a very good road, but, but I think having another dog would be helpful, but, but I've got to, I've got to get through this, you know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, this, People ask me a lot. They say, well, what are you going to do when Gander passes? And I said, it'll be the worst day of my life. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. So. Oh. Oh, I know. I, I should take myself off. <laughs> oh, no. no. Off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Man. Cool. And it was. I think uh, the, I think one of the things that's been, helpful is all these tremendous stories and and uh tributes to gander that have mm-hmm. come to us and which give credence to the fact that he was unique and people that told stories about how gander had you know hanging with gander had stopped them from committing suicide or that uh, had given them a purpose in life or, you know, doing the things that they were doing with us with homeless veterans and things like that had given them a sense of purpose again. And, and, uh, and some of the people that we had done acts of kindness for, uh, people that we had gotten out of their cars and into shelters and, and, uh, and then later into homes and things like that, you know, sending their appreciation. And, and, uh, and then stories I had never, ever, ever known, you know, that, that people then started telling me and, 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 and that buoys me that, you know, I mean, the, the running thing you always say, but I really meant it was, you know, if we like had an impact in one person's life, that was going to be good enough for me. And mm-hmm. to think that he had an impact in hundreds of lives. Yeah. Even better. Mm-hmm. Many people yeah. said he is a, a soul, an old soul. And that was my experience when I met with him. Uh, I felt yeah. he was a almost a human in the in the in the body of a dog, and as a soul is free now, and he can come back as a human and reconnect with the divine. And uh, so that's a nice journey to see for him. Uh, it, it was very unique. This is the. In my life, is the only dog I can say this guy was unique. He has an expression. He had something in the eyes, was never seen anywhere else uh, in any other dogs. And his way of interacting with you, we interacting with other people around you, was very, very unique. And I remember Gaetan, you saying that when you first met. Uh, <laughs> gander that he just very very slowly and quietly got in between you and lan mm-hmm, to protect mm-hmm. lan right because he just had that instinct to automatically know what to do did mm-hmm. he lan he knew exactly what to do no matter yeah. what yeah i i arrived a little bit yeah, i arrived a little bit of rushy in the room i was late and i come in the room with my equipment and gander just came very gently between me and and lon and look at me like calm down <laughs> take your right, time right. everything is fine yeah. uh, that was really unique oh, does anybody I, need a tissue <laughs> yeah, I, you know i think 
you know, of course we call dogs guardian angels. I think, you know, Gander, you know, there's, I used to put a post up all the time and say, you know, I never asked for a guardian angel, but I got one appointed for me. Mm -hmm, and then, mm -hmm. but a friend of mine who's a Buddhist, really, I think, you know, in, in, in Buddhist lore, uh, they call Gendra a bodhisattva mm -hmm. and bodhisattva in Buddhist lore is a creature who is already a person, anything that's already reached enlightenment, but their job is to stand the door of Nirvana at enlightenment mm -hmm. and, and teach other people how to go through. And I think everything that I've learned that's of value. And I, and, and I mean that everything I've learned that's of value in the last seven years has been because of him i mean oh boy it's this, you know <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful you know, it's, it's, it's perfect and yes. so yeah. it's a perfect description of gander i mean yes, this is exactly yeah. how i felt it uh one in you know i have one encounter with him and that was it but it's it was the feeling i had at this point is a uh, is more than just a dog on four legs Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was a yeah, human pressure. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think he's maybe even better than a human. <laughs> so. Yeah, I like um, this picture that you had of him, where you have each other's back all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, we were yeah. like that. He loved to stay connected. You know, he was always. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he was always you know. there taking care of you. Seeing all those pictures have stories. That one was for a, a book of celebrities and celebrity dogs and, and that all the money from that book went to um, to create the law in Chicago that uh, uh, that stopped puppy mills and uh, you know so each one of those has this each one of the pictures you, you showed you know has some kind of incredible magical backstory and sometimes you know we never really talked about those stories because it was yeah. not like you know it's not our purpose to I think we've worked hard at not pounding our chest and, you know, and, 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 uh, somebody else, somebody talked to me the other day and I, and, uh, and, and it was all in, in the right spirit. I mean, I didn't take it badly. They said, Oh, well, you got to finish this book cause it'll be a bestseller and think of the money you could make. And I went, oh. you know, that's, you know, and, 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 and I think he said, think of the good you could do with the charity with that kind of money. And I went, yeah, but you know, <clears throat> none of our motivation has ever been to capitalize on, you know, on, on Gander ever, you know, I mean, he's been a driving force and I think people have been generous, you know, with, with our, all of our acts of kindness because of him, but, but, but to use him as a prop is not something that was ever in the car. I, I had a friend who years ago on social media, put his dog out there and the guy makes a million and a half dollars a year selling merchandise for, about his dog. And I went, gee, wouldn't that be great for the charity? But at the same time, I'm not going to do that. It's, uh, you know, that would be such an insult to everything Gander stood for, you know. Yeah. So. Speaking of stories, what is the story with this one? I guess he was teaching you how to fly. Yeah, we were joking. That was a, yeah, I, I, called, I called that one dog is my co-pilot. Uh, uh, he, uh, we went to... Uh, uh, we had given a talk at uh, the University of Wisconsin Parkside to the psychology students there, uh, uh, I think the night before. And then we went to, uh, it was right around that same time. And then we went out, we were guests of the uh, the Air National Guard out there and, and got to go in some of the old planes and that. So that was really a lot of fun. And how about this one? I guess he yeah, knows how to pretty... drive now. Did he drive you? Was he your chauffeur? Did he drive you around a lot? <laughs> yeah, that's in that's in Jack's car, who's uh, uh, one of Gander's favorite people and really a strong supporter of everything we've ever done. They they had a car show every year at Bettenhausen, uh, in in uh, down in Tinley Park, and uh, we were always the beneficiaries of their fifty fifty raffle, and so we would go down and and Gander's probably the only dog that's ever gotten to to sit in some of those cars because those people <laughs> know how they are about their antique yeah. cars, but. Yeah. But uh, Gander was always, uh, and, and we still have people from the from the car shows still follow us and talk to us, and and that means a lot. And we we made so many good friends there, yeah. yeah. Especially especially Jack, yeah. 
And, and Gander, he always seemed to be so attentive, no matter where you moved to or what you were doing. He always had his eye on you. Or I understand that if he saw somebody that was in need, he would go right up to them. Am I correct? Always. Yeah. I, I you know, the first time you ever did that, we were in, um, and that story will go in the book, but the first time you ever did that, we were in Denver and I was at a McDonald's on the Capitol Hill. And that's where a lot of homeless people gather. And, you know, service dogs are not supposed to go up to other people without consent. And Gander really never, ever did that, except in cases like this. And he got up and went over and laid down on this guy's feet. And I was, I was mortified. I was shocked. I said, oh, my God. I said, I'm so sorry. Gander, come back here. And Gander wouldn't move. And I said, Gander, come back here. And I said, I'm sorry. He must just think you, you know, you needed a smile or something today. And the guy told me, he said, I I did. He said I was diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer yesterday. And, oh, uh, wow. And he, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, well, it's a fluke. But Gander has done that no less than 50 times. And, uh, and, and so we knew then that, that, you know, he, he could pick these things up, you know, and that, and he would be with people right away. I mean, he did, there was a Navy SEAL staying at our hotel one day and he, Gander, Gander got up again and went over to him and, and the guy had a big beer in his hand and the guy went over and leaned against him and the, the Navy SEAL who looked, who looked like he was ready to tear down walls, you know, like immediately burst into tears. And, uh, and he had just lost his dog the week before and and he was also being deployed to Africa and and was worried about the deployment for a number of reasons and said he'd been having nightmares and all kinds of horrible things happening and that uh, and, and Gander was right there for him. Hmm. It was crazy. That happened at least 50, 60 times. Wow. Okay. And, and now... When you were with him 24 seven, when he finally passed, uh, I know that was a difficult time for you. Did you, did you really know that he was going to pass or did you, was there hope that he might make it through? We had calls out to, uh, you know, it had taken us like nine veterinarians to even get him mm -hmm. diagnosed. Uh, you know, first it was, we thought he had, you know, bronchitis, then it was you know, and the medicine didn't work. And then we upped the medicine and then we thought it might be blastomycosis again. And then we thought it might be something else. And then, you know, stage by stage through a whole number of veterinarians. And finally, by the time we got to the University of Illinois, where they did a CAT scan, they found the tiny, tiny uh, tumor by his heart that had metastasized into his lungs. And, and we knew that it was a long shot, but we put out calls to a lot of different places that had trials around the country mm -hmm. and said, Hey, we can get him in here. And, uh, he did really well that week. He was, you know, he was tired and he was having a little trouble breathing, but we were going to all his favorite places and he was enjoying fishing and he was enjoying, you know, like he, he was, you know, he, he still wanted to play ball, even though he couldn't do it for very long and stuff. And, and so we kept waiting for word. And that last night though, was really a horrible, horrible night for him. And I really thought about taking him to the, to the veterinary hospital and, uh, and because I couldn't stand to see him suffer. And then, and then a text came through from one of the universities and, uh, and, and said, Hey, we'll see him tomorrow. And, and uh, we'll do a consult. And I said, if we can get through one more tough night, then maybe we can, you know, maybe there's some hope. And then we went back and one of his closest friends, Joyce and George were both there. And, uh, he was really struggling for a few minutes and he, he tucked himself into Joyce's arms and, uh, passed away. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. Well, with that, we want to do a, a little last tribute to, uh, to Gander. Hey, boy. Hey, boy.
Oh, that was beautiful. That was Thanks. beautiful. Well, Thank Lan, yeah. go ahead. Go Thank ahead, you, Peter. Lan, for all your work. Thank you for your dignity, your special human being, your dedication, your work as a volunteer, helping others. That's what's driving your life. That's what makes your life admirable. Thank you for that. And thank you, everyone, for watching. You had well over 100 comments, Lon, and I'm sure that these are all your fans. And I, I, I'm cer we're certain we could go through every one of them, but this was about you today and you sharing your wonderful gift that was given to you, which was Gander. And you were very blessed, and I was blessed having you. I'm sorry for being a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the club. Yeah. You're blessed, God. You're blessed, Lon. I am. Thank okay. you for that. Still Thank you for sharing with us okay. your blessing. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for doing this. And bye, everyone.